Question six. If all of these wires were made of the same material, which one will have the least resistance? A short thin wire, a short thick wire, a long thin wire, or a long thick wire? So if we want to have the shortest resistance, the smallest resistance rather, then we need a very short wire. If the wire was very thin, then that would increase the resistance because we wouldn't be able to push many electrons through it. So we want a very thick wire. Our answer then is not going to be a long thin wire, but in fact, a short thick wire. Thick wires have less resistance than thin wires, and short wires have less resistance than long wires. Question seven. How does the current through an ohmic resistor change as the voltage across it increases linearly? Does the current increase linearly at all times? Does the current increase linearly at first, but decrease away from the relationship as the voltage increases? Does the current increase linearly at first, but increase away from the relationship as the voltage increases? Or is it none of the above? Now, the key to answering this question is that the question says it's an ohmic resistor. An ohmic resistor always follows Ohm's law. And remember that these don't always exist in real life. Part C says the current increases linearly at first, but then increases away. This would mean that we're getting energy out of nowhere, and that for a relatively low voltage, we can have a huge amount of electric current. Part B says that the higher we try to get the current, the higher the resistance will get, and so will decrease away. Now this is true of resistors in the real world, but resistors in the real world are not ohmic resistors. Because we decrease away from the relationship, we're no longer following Ohm's law, which says V equals IR. So our correct answer must be A. The current increases linearly at all times. An ohmic resistor always obeys this relationship, V equals IR, which means that there's a linear relationship between current and voltage. Question eight. List four ways to change a metal wire so it has less electrical resistance. Can you think of four ways? Well, let's start with the easy ones. We can make the wire shorter so that there's less of the wire that the electrons have to travel through. We can make the wire thicker so that the electrons have more area to travel through. Now perhaps a harder one. We can cool the wire down. If we cool the wire down, then we decrease the vibrational energy of the atoms in the metal lattice. And this means that it's harder for the electrons to bump into them which means the metal has less resistance. Now there's one more change we can make, but it won't be changing the shape of the wire. It'll be changing what the wire is made of. We can simply make the wire out of a more conductive material. Question nine. The resistance of a wire is proportional to its length and inversely proportional to its cross-sectional area. If a cylindrical wire with a resistance of 1.2 ohms is drawn out so it is exactly twice as long as when it started, how does its cross-sectional area change? So let's draw a diagram of what's happening here. We're taking a wire, which might look something like a cylinder, as the question says, and we're drawing it out so that it will have the same volume, but it will be exactly twice as long. So if this is L, then this length is 2L, right? So the cylinder becomes twice as long, but its volume stays the same because we're drawing out the wire. Now, how will its cross-sectional area, that is the area of the circular face, change after we draw it out? Well, think back to the, the volume of a cylinder that you've learned in mathematics. The wire's volume, which is cross-sectional area times length, stays the same. So if we double the length, we have to halve the cross-sectional area. Fairly straightforward, right? Part B, what is its new electrical resistance? So we've doubled the length and halved the cross-sectional area. Both of these will cause the resistance of the wire to double. If we make a wire twice as long without changing its cross-sectional area, its new resistance will be 2.4 ohms. But if we then increase its cross-sectional area so it's only half as big, then we'll double that again. So halving the new cross-sectional area will double the resistance, and doubling the length will double its resistance again. Doubling this twice gives us 4.8 ohms of resistance. 
Question 10. Is a light bulb an ohmic resistor? Justify your answer. Now, what constitutes an ohmic resistor? It means that current has to increase linearly with voltage at all times. But this is not the case for a light bulb. If a resistor is an ohmic resistor, the current in the resistor increases linearly with voltage. When a light bulb is supplied with large voltages, the currents in the bulb cause its resistance to increase. And this means that the current in the light bulb will not increase linearly with voltage. It will decrease away from the linear relationship. So a light bulb is not an ohmic resistor, just like most resistors in the real world. So that's the end of the questions. In this section, we've learned about a model of resistance and how we can use that model to predict how changes to the properties of a wire will change the resistance of that wire.